We just received about 20 centimeters of fresh snow in the Annapolis Valley here in Nova Scotia. Great time to strap on the snowshoes and go look for two majestic birds, both the bald eagle and the snowy owl. I'm your host, Ryan Berry. This is Great Earth Expeditions, the travel series. When people think of the Annapolis Valley, the first thing that comes to their mind is the rolling farmlands of green and red. However, during the winter, it's transformed with a blanket of snow and welcoming many birds of prey who winter here during the cold months. Situated alongside the Bay of Fundy, the valley has a number of spots where these birds can be seen, but today we're going to focus on Blominant, Centerville, and along the Cornwallis River. A great way to see these majestic birds is while snowshoeing. This effective and eco-friendly way to travel gets you up close and personal with them in their own territory. The back end of uh, Cape Blominant on the North Mountain Range and we actually just spotted a couple bald eagles. So we're going to head up trail, snowshoe our way up this mountain and see if we can catch up with them. The pair that we spotted were full grown adults. Did you know it takes between five and six years before a bald eagle gets its signature white tail and head? It's a sign of sexual maturity at which time they search for a mate and they begin starting a family. Although the valley does get its fair share of snow here in the winter time, it is also very temperate. As you can see, blue skies, Sun is beaming down, absolutely fantastic day to be snowshoeing. Due to the large number of farmlands and open fields, the bald eagles have the opportunity to feast on many rodents who are scurrying along looking for their own lunch, but many times end up becoming lunch. The Bay of Fundy itself plays a huge role as well in attracting these birds here for the winter. Twice a day, the highest tides in the world provide a fresh feed of fish for these birds. The eagles are not the only animals braving our Canadian winters here. The Highland cattle feel right here at home. Man, he doesn't look so happy. So what would you do if he decided to charge? I'll show you what we would do. Back on track and continuing our search, this time for the snowy owl, but coming up short, only finding fox, rabbit, and rodent tracks. But we weren't ready to give up just yet. Finally we came across clear evidence that there was an owl in the area as you can see from this wing imprinted in the snow where he made a potential kill. Could this be the snowy owl we were looking for? It's taken us a while to get this far, but we just spotted a snowy owl. He's just at the top of these coniferous trees, we've got to be really quiet because unlike the bald eagle, if he knows that we're here he's going to take off really quick. Often the snowy owl heads south from the Arctic when lemming populations are down, which makes up a huge portion of their diet. Snowy owls generally pair for life and have a 10 year lifespan in the wild on average. Females tend to be a bit bigger than the males with traces of black on their wings while the male is almost completely white. We 
we've spent most of our day chasing wildlife around. Here we see a red fox which appears to be chasing a small rodent. It's amazing to think that he's been running from us all day and someone else has been running from him. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Great Earth Expeditions, the travel series. I'm your host, Ryan Berry. Until next time, stay adventurous and safe travels.